Hello, welcome, Miss Afi. Okay. Uh, your name, Afi Faith and Afi Edo. Uh, can you bring okay, me, what, which one is your real name? Afi Edo. Afi Edo. Afi is your nickname. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Why the Faith? I use it like when I was in my first year in Ghana, I just speak it for my email and social media. So it is stay with me. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I'm extremely excited to be meeting you, talking with you, getting to know you more and your work you've been doing. Um, I, I went through something, your speciality, um, degree in IT, master's in IT, and also you've been a member of the organizing committee for internet governance multi-stakeholder advisory group and speciality in artificial intelligence uh, wireless community network which we shall come to because something i'm very interested in and human rights i mean you are such a thoroughbred and very young age doing so many things i'm really really proud of you i'm really really proud of you i would like to know how did you transition into this internet governance space. How do you get into my this first, internet governance space? Okay, my first point will be for uh, Afghanic as a fail in 2017. After Afghanic, uh, um, I, I was a fellow for AFISIC. AFISIC was the beginning of everything because there I learned a lot about internet government, about uh, what, um, what the youth can do, our voice inside the internet, and then I joined the IGF UN as a mag. And later on, I was a fellow for ICANN, but most I started with Arcanic as a fellow. Wow, wow, wow. Amazing. I mean, that, that has been quite a journey from 2017 to this phase. Are you going to be part of this year's IGF? Yes, I'm, I'm an organizer. <laughs> Uh, in person, or you are going to be joining online? I'll be there. I'll you'll, be there. So. you'll be there in person. Yes. Nice, nice, yes. nice, nice. Um, I'm, I'm extremely proud of you and what have you been doing. I'd like to know, are you part of any of the intersectionals, uh, the best practice forum, the dynamic coalition? Are you part of any of them? Uh, with IGF, you have a lot of working groups. And most of the time, you have to choose your working group depending on your time because we are a full time worker and, and I, I work in the actual, um, internet government just for volunteering. So you have to choose where, where you want to invest your time. So I'm um, part of what you call it the communication, like anything related to a promotion, the social, uh, the social media, and all that. But as for the, uh, the session, uh, the other groups, I would normally join the meeting and contribute when I can, I can do. And that is it. The most wow. of that, I'm um, the out, outreach. Please, can you speak a bit louder? Yes. Thank you. Please, I'm all yes. You can go on. Okay, so I, was, I say I was with outreach. It's more like uh, do uh, advertising for I, uh, IGF, uh, do the social, uh, social uh, publication and those stuff. With that intersectional work, I mostly participate on a meeting and, do my, and send my contribution when I need, they need to, but I'm not really involved on the Wow, amazing. So what has been the drive, the motivation behind all that you have been doing? What has been the motivation behind all that you've been doing? Do you know when you ask somebody, when someone asked me, what are you doing in your life? I was like, I'm IT. Yes. They'd be like, but you're a woman. So I was like, no. Even in 2020, people think like IT is for guys, not for ladies. So my motivation is to help everyone know that whether you are a man or a woman, you can be whatever you want. And IT is not just for men. Amazing, amazing. I mean, that's impressive. 
And uh, I'd also like to know what has been some of the difficulties and challenges being in this space? What have been the difficulties and challenges? And how did you overcome those challenges and barriers? You know, when you are an IT person, most of the time, people think our work is- Hello, please, I'm having a bit of difficulty hearing you. Your voice is a bit low. Yeah, I was saying when we are IT guys or we are working in IT, people think our work is behind the scene. Like you are not, most of the time you see people, IT guys uh, on, on computer, they don't talk, they don't do. But when you go to the internet, internet government sector, you need to be talking because police depend on what you'll be saying. So my first challenge was like how to approach people. <laughs> How to make my voice clear that I'm trying to overcome it. Wow, wow. And how did you how have you overcome that over the years? How did you overcome that? Uh, let me tell you something. When you don't let your voice to know someone will speak for you, and the decision they will take will not advantage you. So you need to speak your voice. That's what I I'm trying to tell myself to overcome it. That's amazing. You have a um, degree in IT and your speciality is artificial intelligence, wireless community networks, human rights and all. I have a very strong passion for bridging the digital divide because I do believe an equal world is an enabled world. I do believe when um, the internet can be used as a source of social good to drive as a economic gains. When we, are, we look around Africa, special, uh, the Sub-Saharan Africa, we can see a big divide, the gender divide. And this is an initiative I'm working on. And I, 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 I intend to leverage on internet societies, community networks. With community networks, in bridging the digital divide. How sustainable is that? Uh, I can tell you that community network is probably the future for Africa and our best solution. But right now you need to push government to adopt it because not in, in, most, in most of the country in Africa, before you get the, um, what do you call it, the opportunity to set up your network, you have to go through a lot of process. And I think government don't want to give people opportunity for uh, to do it because they, they they know that if they allow citizens to have it, the the country will develop. So they don't want to put they don't want to let citizens do it. But from now, um, let's say in the net, in the last past five years and now there have been a lot of changes. And thanks to COVID, it's not it's not a not a good thing, but thanks to COVID, people realize that they need internet and they have to invest on it. Okay. Are you currently working on a community network? Um, right now, no. No. Okay. I just left my job and I'm now a full time student. You've left your job? Yes. Oh, okay. So I'm right now you are freelancing. Student. Are you freelancing? Yes, I'm a full Okay. Sorry? Okay. I mean, are you currently freelancing? Are you working? Are you freelancing? Working for a company? Are you freelancing? No, no. I left my job and I started a master's degree in artificial intelligence. Okay. Uh, in in Togo. No, Senegal. Senegal. Yes. So I'm oh. Dakar now. <laughs> oh, I see. I see. Impressive. Impressive. That that's mild impressive. Mighty. Uh, I mean, you are doing so amazing things and I'm very proud of you. Uh, I can't hide my joy, I'm very proud of you. So one specialty too is about your artificial intelligence. Uh, you've been, uh, artificial intelligence in Africa is, I, I was telling a friend and he, the, the friend was telling me it's a myth. I mean, how, how, how do we scale up and no, with I artificial intelligence? Like when we say something they need in Africa, until they think uh, fall on us. 
like when people will be talking about uh, policy, how to regulate uh, artificial intelligence, you people in Africa, you think like, oh, let's sit back for now because it's not our problem. But in the next five years, what to happen? Those people will have uh, the basis, the solid basis to uh, tell us what you have to do. So I believe it's a need, but it's not something that you have to put in the back of our, of our, of our head. You need to start now. So my specialization will be data analysis. Wow, amazing, amazing. I'm, I'm very proud of you. I'm very, very proud of you. And uh, what's the future of the IGF? What do you think is the future of the IGF? Wait, uh, the, the future of the IGF is great. Because it's like, great. yeah, it's, it's very great because in the last two years, most of the people, especially the, the youth, there are not a lot of youth participating in Berlin uh, these days. Last, uh, were you in Berlin? I, trans I transitioned into this space just this June. Okay, okay, okay. So like uh, June, uh, what do you call it? Berlin, June this year, 2021. Uh, 2021, they have a lot of activities for youth. And the, uh, the Poland government is bringing a lot of youth to IGF. So they put a lot, a lot of effort and money on it. So I believe the future is, of IGF is very, is very bright, it's very bad. Especially when you see Africa now, most of people are trying to interest themselves in, IT, uh, in, in internet government, especially the government, they know like the place is, the, the place is growing, so they have to come. Impressive, impressive. I, I I worry about Africa's digital economy. I think one of your expertise is digital economy. Am I right? Yeah. And we research do shows that we are moving from traditional economy to that of the digital economy. And digitalization is one thing which can spearhead this whole project. What is the health, what is the state of Africa's digital economy? I mean, um, when, when you talk about digital economies in Africa, what was the state, what's the health now? Is it in good shape? Like, uh, I would take the, yes, sorry? Okay. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, no. Yes. Okay, so I was asking the digital economy in Africa, what's the current state of the digital economy in Africa? And how do we accelerate it for sustainable growth? Okay, let's take my, the case of my country. And some years back, we don't even have a ministry of digital economy in Togo. And now you have a, a whole minister for it. And what they are doing is great. It's like they are, they are, what do you call it? They put money in innovation projects. And they know that like in the next few years, they will need the, 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 the internet or uh, the, uh, the, uh, the digital to go. Let me say this, nowadays before, like in most of countries in Africa, they have the cities, they have the village, they have so so and so. But when they, you know most of the foods, most of the, st the stuff we use in town are from village. And if you don't have a good network or a good uh, system to help us um, monitor the food they are, they are, they are growing in, in town, in village to town, you have a problem. That's what, uh, what I'm trying to say is like digital economy, you have like, now they we talk about uh, agriculture, digital agriculture or something. You have uh, the, the e-transportation. You can stay at your home and just uh, use your phone and, and, and call a, a taxi or whatever. And these things, it, 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 it starts improving. Let me say that it starts improving. A lot of things have happened, and I believe that when you see Africa of today and the Africa of the future, 
a lot of things will change. And people and governments are aware of that. I saw last week or somewhere, some days back in your country that they are voting a momo <laughs> tax something. <laughs> because My country, we are about that to tax. Money inside. <laughs> yes. There's money inside. So they want to take the part of the cake. So believe me or not, this Do you think it's a good move? Do you think it's a good move? No, no. It, it, will, it will erode the gains of the uh, digitalization we want to achieve, right? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, so yes. my country and is seeking to tax mobile money and uh, mm -hmm. it has generated a lot of controversy, a lot of, yes, yes. And uh, it's, it's quite unfortunate, but I'm hoping because the taxes on it is something else they try to impose on mobile money. And the whole financial inclusion we talk of is going to be a spend for of the, something else. Okay, so um, let's move to something else. I, I, I look at youth participation in the IGF, the youth participation in tech spaces. Previous last few days, I think on Twitter, I, I was reading certain comment um, commentary, and a young man was being accused of trying to how do I put it, engaging women, telling them I'm going to get you a job, or you want to start coding, and sexually harassing them. I, I this is very worrying for something which should be worrying for all of us is quite unfortunate and how do we create safe spaces for women the first thing i will say is like send it back to the grassroots like start teaching people it when they are on what do you say, in the primary school teach them how the good and the bad of about internet and from then they can they can uh, they can protect themselves. It's not just it's not the problem of internet. It's the education we are giving to our youth. So let me say, you just need to put government to put pressure on government to send IT back to the primary school, start at the at the early age, so they will know what to believe, how they can how to not believe, how they can behave themselves on, on the internet what to send, how to not send. So send IT back to the primary school, everything will be going. Impressive. And I look at also the internet. Historically, we look at the history of the internet and Africa was missing in there. Uh, I didn't see any African as part of those actively involved in the technical or say the digital infrastructure or say in shaping up the, but we are coming on board. Uh, in, in, how, how do we, yes, we are contributing, policy making, you've actively engaging in there. What's the future with internet shutdowns in most African states? We saw in Zambia during the elections, we saw in some parts of Ethiopia. As part of you, you specialize a bit of digital rights and human rights too. I, I, I'm quite interested in knowing how we can also bring in the, the state of digital rights in Africa. How do we engage users so that their right to movement, their right to education, their right to life, all of them are met in the, within the digital space in the African context? Uh, but I will say that we cannot stop uh, government to shut the internet. Then you can have a, a, a strong uh, civil society organization inside every country. Even when you shut it, we, if, even when they are trying to shut it down, those organizations can put their foot on the ground and tell them no, it's not, it's against the law. And most of the time, the problem with Africa is like you don't have solid regulation, 
solid uh, uh, law law making IT special in IT sector. Most of it is recently people are starting doing what do you call it? Uh, what do you call it? Personal data, personal data regulation or laws. It just came right uh, recently because France or Europe, uh, Union European uh, decided to put something, what do you call it, to put uh, a regulation down. So African countries have to follow it. If not, they cannot um, do take the challenge. So what I would say is like, let's create a solid uh, civil society organization inside each country and they will do the job. Impressive. Okay, so... Um... Another question to have, like, this year you, you'll be in Poland and uh, you're going to be participating actively in there. I, I want to know what's one thing you, you, you seek to, as you go to Poland, be part of the IGF, you seek to champion, you seek to pioneer over there. One thing which is very dear to you, a topic that is very dear to you, you hope is de dealt with, you are going to, what, what, are, what are you going, what, I mean, What's one something dear to you over there as you're going there? Uh, for me, going to Poland, like, I want to see the, the, the fruit of what we have put one year to prepare. This one is first. And this is my, uh, my last year. And I want to go to encourage the next generation, the youth, to that what they are doing is not, we are seeing them. We know that they are here and you want to encourage them to do more. Don't want to be, the, don't want this, the next generation to be like our generation. You don't have people to tell us how to do, how to do it. You don't have people to give our hands. So for me, going to uh, IGF in Poland, in Poland is like, I want to say goodbye to my active participation. <laughs> and tell the youth that we are behind them and we are supporting them and see the, what you are put one year to put in, in place. Quite impressive, quite impressive. So um, any nuggets you have to share with me as I transition? My, my transition to this space just started in June. has been quite exceptional for me, a wonderful ride. Being part of the Youth IGF Ambassadors has been a very beautiful experience. And, and congratulations, um, by the way. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And I've been doing amazing so things for my easy process, but you made it. Yes, yes. And uh, gradually, I've been doing some amazing things for myself. It's been a wonderful space. I'm loving it. And I just hope to keep on going, keep on going, keep on going. I would like to know what nuggets, what advice will you give to me as I... I signed up with the Dynamic Coalition of Dis Disabilities. I hope to be part of the Gender Coalition Group. I hope to be actively involved. And what kind of advice do you have for me? You know? What I will tell you first is just get involved with the local representative of IGF in your country, like uh, Ghana um, Internet Society, Ghana, uh, Ghana SIG, and what, uh, anything related to the field of IC or something that you, you can put your energy into. And second, I will ask you to join the mailing list because most of the things happen inside the mailing list. And it's not every day that you have time to meet people in face-to-face -face or have online meetings, but most of the information pass through the mailing list. And what I will ask you is not, you are at your beginning, so I will, I will tell you just Take your time, enjoy, enjoy all the topic, and, and from two years from now, you can focus on what you want. You really want to focus your energy to, because IGF is a lot of is a broad area. So if you don't take care, you just get missed among all this. So just focus on what you uh, what is dear to your heart and put your energy on it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Quite impressive. All too soon, we became to an end of this interview, but I'd like you to share some personal info, fun facts about you. I, I got to read on the internet, you are part of, um, you're a MAG member, you, you've been doing extraordinary things with PESA, CEIPSA, and aside professional space, aside volunteerism, 
what other things do you engage in? We need to, we can, we need to know. I need to know. Uh, I Something want to share with me? I didn't get your question. Well, please can you come back? Okay, so what I'm saying is that aside professionally and also volunteerism, volunteering, what other things do you engage in? Any fun, anything fun fact about you? Any personal thing you want to share about me? Share with me. For now, I would say it's professionalism and volunteerism. <laughs> Okay. Um, you enjoy reading. Love you love yeah. to cook. You love yeah, I reading. Love, I love learning new stuff. All right. And um, where currently are you stay living in Togo or Ghana? Sorry? Where currently are you living in Togo or Ghana? I mean, I was in Togo like two weeks ago. I live in Togo for the past three years or so. But uh, then I was in Ghana in 2017 or 16. And I moved back to Togo in 2017. Now I'm here. So you are currently in Senegal or? Yes, for the next oh, okay. two years. OK. You have to visit Ghana. Oh, no, I was there in February. <laughs> OK. Um, September or August, I was in Ghana. But now, nice. like because of COVID, they close the borders, so it's not easy to come and go. Yes. It's not like before, like you can jump around. Those so, I hope the border will be open and I can come back. Sure thing, sure thing. It's been amazing talking to you. Um, happy faith, happy adult. I'm very impressed. I'm um, sharing all these beautiful nuggets with me, sharing your experiences with me within the internet space, and um exceptionally grateful you are such a thoroughbred and i keep on inspiring some of us i will definitely do get in touch and we will keep the conversation moving we keep the goal so that we can enrich and build our internet it's been very very amazing and thank you so much thank you so much thank you so much so um thank you, we will definitely continue the conversation thank you so much for honoring this invitation i appreciate thank you Bye. And good luck.